G'day guys, welcome back. Welcome to Pouring Your Heart Out with Julie. And uh, most of you, I guess, know that I mainly do acrylic pouring, but I've been really enjoying doing resin pours. Now this is a new mold that I've got, a four piece coaster with the geode edges just on the one side, so they fit together nicely. It's a nice, thick, heavyweight, um, sort of a, yeah, it's a silicon mold, but it feels like really thick rubber, you know, as opposed to those really light, thin white ones. This one I got from Colour Passion uh, Australia, and they posted it out to me. Now, I'm just using some tape that I folded over just to go in the centre here and make sure that I haven't got any little bits of dust or hairs or anything. So I just go over that real quick, make sure that I've got nothing in there. It's, it is a brand new mould, I've never used it, but it's been sitting out here for a couple of hours while I'm getting myself organised. So there are some little bits of, oh look there's a hair and bits of fluff and all kinds of things. So yeah, do that, make sure that your mould's nice and clean before you start. My new um, resin arrived this morning, 5.30 in the morning by courier woke the household up dogs are all barking but anyway here it is it's by Barnes this one is called clarity it's a two part so this is the part B and the part A is this big one I didn't want to get so much but all the smaller sizes were sold out so that's what I've got um, and I've mixed that up already much less bubbles than the previous Barnes one that I was using. I was using the Barnes epoxy glass thinking that all resins were equal. Um, epoxy glass is for coating coasters or canvases or whatever. This one is more of a, this is a casting one so put that over there. I just, I, I did wear my gloves when I was mixing it up. I've just taken them off so I can show you what colours I'm going to go with. Look I've got little cute coffee cups. Uh, and I wanted the paper one so I could pinch there and make you know a little thin design so got those little cute ones I think they're 150 mils which would be <clears throat> five ounces um, I'm going with this is Pearl X black and this is primary elements um, permission what is it Persimmon, 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 I don't know, um, primary elements, hot cinnamon, it's a kind of a goldy, rose goldy kind of a colour, this one's going to be clear and then I've got these little flakes, um, mica flakes, precious gold, that's them there, so that looks pretty, so those are going to be my colours. And I'm just going to divide my resin into these cups here. All right, so I'm going to do that. I've just put my mold on this spinny thing. I've dropped a flake in there. Just so that when I'm finished, I can easily pick this up and move it out of the way so that I can then use my table here to, um, to video an acrylic pour for you. So that's why it's sitting on there and it's good because I can turn it around if I need to. So I've stirred it for the five minutes. I'm not quite sure how much I'm going to need in each cup. This is um, 360 mils. I did 240 mils of part A and half of that obviously 120 of part B. So... I think what I'll do is I'll half fill them all first. I can always make up more. This resin's got a work time of about, um, what did it say? 25. They sent me this technical data sheet. Uh, 25 to 35 minutes. And you can put something hot on it up to 145 degrees. Now the last one, I'm only going to put a little bit in because I want to make like a paste out of the, the mica flakes. So I've still got quite a lot left. So let's maybe 
Mm, not sure how much I'm going to need. Let's do three quarters of a cup each. It's tricky working with a new mould, isn't it? You don't know how much you're going to need. All right, I'll just leave the rest in there um, in case I need it for something else. I can always mix up some more, can't I? Right, let's start with the black. Ooh, it's very black. Um, I'll just do a scoop. I don't really know how much to use, but let's do a scoop. Put that in there. I'll just wipe my little spoon, then I can use it again. I won't put the lid on back just yet because I'm not sure how much I'm going to need. And I don't know. How about we just do like a slightly heaped spoon? Really don't know, which means I need a little bit more of the black. Let's wipe that again. And slightly heaped. I was told, well, I saw it on a video actually, um, that the, the more mica powder you use, the more effects you're going to get. Now this one I'm kind of going to use because I've got four to do. I think I'm going to do like four spoons. One, two, three, four. There we go. That's that guy there. Put him out of the way. I just clean my little spoon. I can use my spoons again. All right, so I think that's, that's probably enough. Let's just put the lids back on these guys. Oops, wrong lid. Hopefully I'm not taking too long. Some people like to see the whole process. Actually, I should move that, shouldn't I? Otherwise I might get bits in it. Oh, that's pretty. So that's Pearl X. It's got a little bit of a shimmer to it. It looks looks pretty opaque. I want to get nice um, effects happening. So I don't want to make it too thick, but then I don't want to make it too thin either. Apparently, if you make it too thin, you just don't get your effects going. Feel free to fast forward if you don't want to watch this. I'm keen to see the colours, though. I'm still waiting for my white pigment paste to arrive. I actually ordered a few different colour pigment pastes while I was at it because, you know, if you get to order one thing, you might as well order five because the shipping cost is the same. So that's more of a transparent. I can see the stick through there. Let's leave it at that one. And then this one is lighter. And hopefully these two colours will kind of blend together a little bit. So they're similar but not too similar. That one's a transparent as well. So you can see through the stick. If you wanted to make it more opaque, you'd have to add another spoonful, I guess, of your mica powder. That one's just clear. And this has got my little flakes in it. Probably put a little bit too much resin in there, actually. I wanted it more of a paste. So it didn't move too much. But that's fine. Okay. Now I'm going to just zoom you in a little bit so you can see a little bit more close up what I'm doing now that I've finished mixing everything. I'll just center you a little bit better. There we go. How's that? Nice and close up, hey? Okay. So <clears throat> I'm going to do a black edge first. Let's move these out of the way for a minute. And I want to pinch that so that I can get like a nice, like, I think I 
can hold it like that. Actually, I might start here. Oh, I've got something in there already. What is that? Oh, it's very handy having that bit of tape, except now it's stuck to me. All right, I'll start here. And I just want to do a little bit. I know that the black really takes over. So I don't want too much black. Oh, there's a lot there. I need to go a little bit thinner with my trace. By the time I've done all four, I'll have it down pat. Okay, <laughs> that one's a bit thick in there as well. I'll have to push it into the corners later. It's a nice shaped mould, this one. And I've got way too much black. I could do another mould with the amount of black I've got. Actually, someone suggested to me um, to get a mould um, that's like a paperweight mould and then all your little bits, you layer on top of it. And if you do another another one the next day and you've got leftovers, you layer that and then the next day you layer that. And by the end of it, you've got a really pretty colourful paperweight with all your leftovers in, which I thought is a great idea. So I'm going to have to find a mould that I can use for that. For that purpose okay let's go with the next one I probably made up way too much resin here just kind of just put that around the edge there let it kind of over the black a little bit it's just going where it wants to go really <laughs> a little bit on the edge there because oh, I want the, the black to kind of seep in to the other colors so i'm kind of half on the black and half off the black but it, just however it goes really you can see it's starting to blend already okay now the next one oh the weight oh my gosh no oh, get off a little bit of that one oops we're closing in that's okay I'm going to put some clear in the centre in a minute. I don't know why that one's closed in so much. Okay, so that's that one. Now I'm going to pour my clear in and hopefully push everything back. And that will free me up to put my sparkles in. So that little cup's empty. I have still got this in here. Let's pour that in. And then I'll know that that's all I've got. I still have got some, you know, of that gold and some of that rosy gold one. But let's, now that we've got our clear centre, let's just... It's a bit runny. I shouldn't have put so much resin in because it's I wanted a paste and it's not really a paste now it's more of a it flows so anyway let's pour some in the middle let's put a little bit in the middle of each one first make sure I've got enough it's looking pretty so that's probably just going to sink right through okay Oh, that's looking so good. I don't want too much of the gold in the middle. Now, I wonder what happens if I pour this in the center. You see, it's it's breaking up, so I don't want to do that. Let's not do that. I'll pour the clear around, rather. Oh, that looks so shimmery. Oh, my gosh. Wowzers. All right, I'm just going to pour this around. So I'm basically just going to fill up my molds now and I want to take them to the top so that I don't um actually that one's a bit lower yeah I'm just going to pour some in around the gold 
just to bring them up to the top. I want to make sure that they are at the top so that I don't get that lip. You know when you take your coaster out, sometimes you get a bit of a lip if, um, if it hasn't been filled to the top and then you have to sand it. Oh God, I can't pour this properly. Come out, come out, because I'm trying to pour just a tiny bit. Round the outside, round, oh, oh, I hope it's not going to overflow. <gasps> that might have been a bit much. I think the top's actually going to be the top by the looks of it because it's so pretty. If you flip these over, you're just going to get like a, a lot of gold on the bottom, aren't you? So I think this, the top's going to be the top hair or fluff or something now let me just make sure they're all the same this one's this one's good this one's to the top that one's to the top this one needs a little bit more I'm just filling it up with my clear I don't want the the black to take over too much you can see how the the black is um, sort of wisping in which is really pretty which is exactly what I wanted been watching hours and hours of YouTube of people doing resin so yep <laughs> I'm learning no expert by all means I'm learning all right now oh, I need to torch someone said to me oh, I see I should have done it earlier someone said to me don't torch after you've domed like after it's domed because then you heat it up and it just kind of it breaks the surface tension and it all kind of flows out so mm, there's really not many bubbles I'm just going to use my little blowtorch here this is a like a creme brulee type of a guy so this resin is particularly good for this type of installation it doesn't have very many bubbles at all which is perfect that's really that's really good oh wow that's a lot of gold in the middle there isn't there now i've probably got enough to do another coaster i don't want to waste it i really don't um, i've got this this red one because there's, there's enough in there. There's not, oh, it's not very much clear, but there's enough in there. I'm sure there's enough to do one more. Like, I don't want to waste it. I'm going to have to have a look online. I'll check on eBay and see if there's um, like a paperweight type thing that I can sit there. And maybe it's like a, maybe it's like a long, it can even be like a long one. And I can just keep putting layers and layers and layers and then of leftover resin. And then when it's done, I'll just have this like block of resin. Okay, last time with the bubbles. I'm make sure there's none in there. I have high hopes for this. This is looking like my best ever coaster set so far. Now that my new products are here and oh, it's looking just amazing. I probably didn't need all that gold in there in that middle, did I? Okay. Um, I don't want to move that. I don't want to overflow it. I'm just going to, hang on, I'm just going to take you down there so you can have a little look. And I'm going to use up my leftovers. I'm going to use my leftovers in that other mould. I'm gonna do this little guy here on the top. So let's do it. So happy I don't have to waste this. It's warm. I didn't know resin got hot. My little cup's warm. All right, let's go around the outside, around the outside. Okay, and then the darker one. Looks quite brown, doesn't it? My little coaster set, it's looking quite brown. Now I'm going to go into the black a little bit because I want that to blend. 
and then the lighter one they seem to be blending quite well hey they're very similar maybe they're too similar I don't know I was tossing up between doing this one or um oh, actually I could do with more paint uh more paint I'm so used to using paint oh no I see I shouldn't have done that um around again yeah I was tossing up between using um, a darker one it was like a, um, a red but then I thought oh I don't know what the red's going to do I'm just going to pour all that in actually these are quite deep even though I'm not going to use I'm not going to fill it up to the top I do want to try and use up everything I've got now this is my clear so I'm just going to pour all that in and push that color to the outside this is the last of my clear so i must remember that i don't need very much black if i'm going to do black along the edges i really don't need much of it at all because it takes over and you're only doing a, a thin edge so you don't actually need as much all right that's enough it'll spread out a little bit i don't want it to take over um, what have I still got? I've still got some of this. I might just pour this one in. Let's go around the outside again. Might as well use it all up. And we can come back later and see what happens. See if the the black's going to react. Like push into it and blend into it. And it does look totally different to the other one because this is a like a orangey color mold so i can see through it into the orange and then the other one i can see through into the white mold all right so we'll just leave it like that i'll give it a quick torch so that's pretty much all of it done i've got a little bit of the black left and i've got a little bit of that um gold sprinkle left but that's it so next time i'll remember that i don't need quite so much resin and go over and torch these again just quickly on the other side there there we go okay oh look the black starting to do its thing starting to come in let's go down for a little look move that tripod right out of the way so i don't knock it over dogs are starting to bark see I, I turned the lights off now and now it thinks that it's too dark and it doesn't want to doesn't want to focus I don't know okay so that's it there oh, I can't I'm oh, sorry I can't get a good shot of it, it just looks sort of hazy has so anyone bought one of those little tiny camera lensy things that sits over your phone? Has so anyone got one of those? I was thinking about getting one of those, but it's like $200. So you can see the black, how it's making its, it's having those little effects that it's doing. Now that's telling me that I didn't have enough black mica pigments in, because it's very, very thin very faint that those little effects that it's doing you know when the the black blends into the other colors so that was like that was just a, a little level teaspoon wasn't it so if I want more of those black effects I need to put more pigment in and also in my other colors they're quite transparent so again learning I'm learning 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 heaps so I just need to make sure maybe I'll put two scoops of the, the mica powder in if I want a, a more opaque look. But I think these are going to be really pretty. So um, I'll leave it there. I'll see you in the morning. See how they turn out. I'm so excited. See ya. Good morning. I'm back. Look, I've got some um, cloth gloves that I'm going to put on. 
because I think these are going to be really beautiful and I don't want to get smudgy fingerprints all over them so I'm just going to use these pretty cool huh <laughs> all right so that's them there I am expecting the gold just to sink through and make a puddle on the back on the other side so not much we can do about that the gold is heavy but let's see I'm going to bend it like that and bend it like that see they pop out really easily can see through it put it over here you can see right through it I probably need to move that out of the way actually shouldn't I that back one let's have a look look at that so sparkly I don't think I used enough mica powder but um, yeah still learning it's very transparent I mean you do get a beautiful shimmer there in the corner from that mica powder but I just don't think it's quite enough I'll turn them all out and then I'll show you without having this on the background hey this is the first one they're all going to be very similar really come out so easily I love the dark edges now I'm tossing up between doing copper on the edges to pick up this um, sort of coppery mica powder or going with the gold to pick up the gold in the center hmm not sure I might put up a photo on Facebook and then you guys can have a tell me and then I'll do the edges and then I can finish the video because I like doing the edges finishing the video and then um, you know uploading it Look at that beautiful, smooth, shiny finish. Tiny, tiny little lip. I filled them up, you know, as, as full as I could. And you're really picking up the, the shimmer of the marker powder there. Look, you can see my fingers underneath. <laughs> so, so you can see the sort of rose gold coppery look to it there. That's why I'm thinking maybe do the copper gilding pen along the edges so all the, very similar you know <laughs> there's not really one that's a lot different to the other they're all very similar you're in my bathroom this morning my ensuite trying to see if this light is better Okay, I'll just remove this. Oh, I have to show you the round one too, don't I? That round one I did. Dogs are barking at something. You wouldn't think they'd be barking at something at 6.30 in the morning, would you? I love this new mould. See how shiny it is? Once your mould loses that shine, then um, you don't get shiny surfaces on your coasters anymore. You'll just get matte surfaces I think they go around this way really if you're displaying them on a table somewhere I think they'd sit together like that wouldn't they look at that Woohoo! I'm so glad I'm so happy with these now this one this one's just a totally different kettle of fish let me shut the door So yeah, the round one that I did, I think it really does determine the effect you're going to get by the shape of your mould. Because look at that, being round, everything has moved into the centre, kind of in the same way. I'm trying to get rid of that light. Oops, there's a reflection of me. I'm going to do this. It looks like a big eyeball. 
Let's see if we can get this one out. Hopefully it hasn't stuck. I've seen so many people with these moulds and they get stuck and little pieces of silicone are stuck to the edges. But it looks as if it's going to do its thing. Woohoo! Yay! Look at that! Did it! Wow, that is just so different to the others. This was the one that I just... Let me turn that light off. Which one? I don't know which one that is. I think it's obviously my overhead. Hang on one sec. Mm. Is it that one? Nope. <laughs> that one? I'm in the dark now. Here we go. It's just really hard to pick up. Uh, reflective surfaces? I don't know. Wish I knew either how other people did it. Put those lights back on. I think it's better with the lights on. Okay, there we go. See, all the black has kind of come into the center, and it's the same all the way around. We've got our little shimmer there of the mica powder. I've never had gilded the, the edges on these big round ones. I guess I could though. Same thing, do you go copper or do you go gold? Now I'm expecting a big blob of gold to be in the middle underneath. Let's have a look. The suspense is killing me. Oh, look at that. Wow. Okay, so that's just a lot of mica powder and a lot of gold on the bottom there. You can't see any of those black effects that you get on the top. I'm thinking that the black mica powder, because you know I didn't make it very uh, dense, it's quite light, so it's sort of sitting on top and giving those effects. Um, whereas that, those little flakes, It's different because I'm using the Perlex powder, which dissolves much easier, and then I'm using these, um, these are more like flakes, and they don't tend to dissolve as much, so they kind of sit there on the bottom. I guess that's different between mica powders and mica pigments, maybe. These are more flake-like. But either way, really pretty. Look, I can polish it with my gloves. <laughs> so there we go. We'll put that one there. <clears throat> Alrighty. Now I just have to work out what colour to do the backgrounds. Not the backgrounds, the edges. And then um, I'll be set like a jelly. I'll get it done. Okay, guys, thanks again. Um, I will be back because I want to show you the finished edges. So I'll be back soon. Okay. It is edging time so I've decided to do the copper edging only because the sort of coppery rose gold color that's in the the mica pigments there it's not a very strong color like there's not a lot of it visible the gold is very visible and so I decided to enhance the little bit of the rose gold copperish color that's in there by painting the edges with copper. So that's what I've done. So I've done three already. I haven't done the back um, only because these pens are expensive and if I'm not going to be showing the back then why waste my money on painting the back edges. So that's what I'm using. It's the Krylon copper leafing pen. So I've got copper, gold and silver in these leafing pens. And that's what I'm going to use. I've got my glove on just on my, my left hand so that I can hold the coast like this without getting, you know, dirty prints and things on the back. So it's got a flat edge and I've done two sides already. I just thought I'll do one side and then that, uh, just so that I can show you. Uh, you do need to give it a good shake 
and then also get like a blotting pad just make sure that the pad the paint is actually coming out so just use that as well and here we go it's actually a pretty good size the nib for for painting the edge it goes on really well if you make a mistake and maybe you smudge the top you will actually need to get a little bit of um, you know those little alcohol pads the little cleansing pads because it stays on and then just to do that little back edge the underneath edge I just run the pen on an angle like that and that just cleans up that back edge and then I also do it on the front that also just cleans the edge and then later on um, well I'll do it I'll do it on this one I just take half the nib of the pen that's on the coast and half off I don't know if you can see that there and just run it all the way along and that's my top edge done cool huh <laughs> I'll do the top edge on this one as well there is a tiny little lip on these so you've got something to follow oh that's better it's not so glary I'm sitting outside on my deck so there we go that's the top edge done well on that side you just got to be really careful not to touch it because it's still wet and it can smudge so I tend to do this the edges first and then put it down and do another edge and put it down and then come back and do the tops that way I don't smudge the top because I could easily smudge that now by holding this here so I've just got to be careful and then when you do your you can push down on it like that to get the paint to come back out just run your pen over the top it works really easily with the geodes if you can't get in there you can sort of go up and down like if you've got a little tight spot that you can't get into you can just sort of run up and down like that until it's all done the actual geode wiggly edges take a little bit longer to do a little bit more fiddly as you can imagine and I just give the pen a little push to get the paint to come down if it's slowing down a little bit but it does work really well and I've just got to make sure I'm not smudging anything I'll just do this one edge hopefully you can see let's put the corner down actually on my just like my little fluffy cushion cover here I thought it would look pretty I don't actually have anything any nice fabrics to put down underneath them so I used a, a cushion cover last little bit and there we go look at that okay let's do the the edge again support your hand so it's not gonna wobble just get half the pen on and half the pen off the edge of the coaster I'm supporting my hand with my little finger on there it's pretty easy to do and then sometimes you miss the actual top bit so that's when you have to just go over the very edge with your pen just to get the very top edge because it does get missed a little bit if you make a mistake you know if you go crooked just get your little alcohol wipe out and wipe it off it's easier to do as soon as you notice there's a problem rather than waiting for it to dry I'm assuming that this pen will stay on really well because it's hard to get off you know I have to have the alcohol to um, to take it off Right, let's do this edge half on half off that way I just get a thin line Ta -da! and I'll do the top edge as well and we are done 
me put the lid back on, save my pen. So there we go. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Got a little bit of pen on my glove there. To be expected. So it'll take a little while to dry, so just be careful with it. You don't want to smudge it. And there we go. We are done. What do you think? Do you like them? They're very pretty. I really like this set. I think this is my favourite yet. Not that I've done a lot. But um, I do like these colours. Alright, I'll leave it there. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've learnt something. You know, as I keep saying, I'm no expert in resin. I'm just learning. I'm just starting. But um, if I can show anybody how I'm going with my learning and make it a little bit easier for maybe someone else to give it a go, then um, yeah, that's great. All right, let me stand up. This is going to be a long video, isn't it? <laughs> uh, there we go. Love them. Thanks again for watching everybody and um, I will be back. Let me know if there's any resin colours that you want me to do. I'm still waiting for my other moulds so unfortunately I'm just going to have to use these moulds until the others arrive from overseas. But um, I certainly am enjoying it. Alright, I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.